factor using the grouping method. You look at this one and you might think it's a GCF, but all four terms don't have a common factor. You can't divide them all by a K, you can't divide them all by a 7. So we're going to do the grouping method. Here's how the grouping method works. Split the problem into two groups, the first two terms and the last two terms. And we're going to do a GCF, but we're going to do GCF on the two groups. So look at the first group, 42K to the third plus 7K to the second. Both of those terms are divisible by 7K to the second. That's the GCF of that first group. So if you take the GCF out, or if you think about distributive property, however you, you like, 7K squared times 6K would give me 42K to the third, and there's a plus sign. And 7K squared times 1 would give me 7K squared. So that's the GCF of my first group. Now let's look at the second group. The second group, 48K plus 8, has a common factor of 8. So I'm going to put a plus sign and an 8 there. If you take that 8 out, okay, or think of a distributive property, 8 times 6K would get you back to 48K, and plus 8 times 1 would get you back to the 8. And so I've done a GCF on the red and on the blue, or on the first group and on the second group. But what's important to notice here is that both groups ended up with this 6k plus 1. And so a lot of students don't understand this, but really that's a GCF again. If you think about this as a problem like thing plus thing, if you're adding those two things, both of those two things have something in common. They both have a 6k plus 1 in common. And so I think of it as taking out that GCF. But if you took out that GCF, you would be left with just the 7K squared and the 8. And so we're going to do pretty much the same thing as what we've always done on a GCF, but we're left with the 7K squared plus the 8. That is factored. We know it's factored because factored means um, put it as multiplication. And we've got a term times a term there, 6K plus 1 times 7k squared plus 8. That's factored. That's finished. So then the next problem says use the grouping method to solve each equation. We're going to do the same thing, but one step more to solve. So split it into two groups and look for each GCF. The first group has x squared in common. Okay, and so if you think about distributive or taking it out, 3x squared times 3x, and 3x times, or uh, x squared times minus 4. That would be your first term. So think about distributing it back. x squared times 3x is 3x cubed. x squared times negative 4 is negative 4x squared. So now look at the second group. Those two terms, 15 and 20, are both divisible by 5. So I'm going to put a plus 5 here and take out that 5, or 5 times 3x and 5 times minus 4. So the whole thing that makes this work is when you've got these two terms right here that match, or these two binomials that match. If they don't match, then you messed up. You better start over and try again. But if they do match, then you're in great shape. You just write down that match, 3x minus 4, and then you write down the other part, x squared plus 5. So what we've done so far is factored. We haven't solved, okay? Solving is finding the zeros. And so we've done this a lot of times before. You look for what's going to make each of those things equal to zero. 3x minus 4 equals zero. You might be able to do this in your head, but if you can't, you're just trying to isolate the variable. Add 4 and divide by 3. You get x equals 4 thirds. As for the other one, the other one's a little bit harder, I suppose, because of the x squared. But you're just trying to isolate the variable. So start off and subtract the 5. You have x squared equals negative 5. And then to continue, to get the x by itself, you're going to have to take the square root. 
Now one thing to remember here is when you take the square root of both sides, you have to do plus or minus. There's actually two roots, a positive root and a negative root. So we have a positive square root of negative 5, and we have a negative square root of negative 5. Now please remember, when we had a square root of negative, we did this and we talked about this a while ago, but a square root of a negative is going to put an i in there. So that's going to be i times the square root of 5, and negative i times the square root of 5. So if you look at it, we have three solutions. Three solutions. The first solution is 4 thirds, and then you have i times the square root of 5, and negative i times the square root of 5. Use the quadratic formula to solve each equation. This isn't really new, but this is going to come back in one of the new questions in a big way. So make sure you know how to do this. First thing you're going to need is the quadratic formula. So make sure you write this down somewhere on your page, somewhere on a piece of paper, at the top, at the bottom. It doesn't really matter, but that's the quadratic formula, and that's what you're going to need to solve this equation. So you see the quadratic formula has different numbers, a, b, and c. Those are the coefficients in your problem. So a is 3, and b is 2, and c is 4. So you get those straight from the equation, and you just plug them into the formula. So this problem doesn't have an x in it. It's a k, right? So k is going to equal negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's get to it. We're going to have negative b is 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared. I'm going to go ahead and do that in my head. b squared, 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times a is 3 times C is 4. All that's going to be over 2 times A is 3. All right, so first step, we just plug that in and, and we, uh, we see what happens. So I'm going to clean this up, and you can use a calculator if you like. Um, 4 times 3 times 4 right here. Is going to be 4 times 3 is 12, times 4 is 48. And so if I clean up this, I'll have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 48 is negative 44, all over 6. Okay. Now, we've done this before, but it's been a while. We need to clean up that square root of 44. And so the square root of 44, we know what to do with the negative in there. It's just going to have an i in it. The square root of 44, we can say, well, there's a square root of 4 in it. It's 4 times 11. And I know the square root of 4 is 2. So I split the 44 into 4 times 11 because I know the square root of 4 is 2. And so I'm going to change this part into 2i times the square root of 11. So otherwise, I would have negative 2 plus or minus 2i times the square root of 11 all over 6. Okay? And so we've done this before. I called it v-canceling, but since all three of those terms are divisible by 2, let's divide them all by 2. I'll divide by 2, I'll divide by 2, I'll divide by 2, and reduce that into negative 1 plus or minus 1i, or just i, times the square root of 11, all over 3. And that is your answer. Okay? It's actually two solutions. If you want to think about it as two different numbers, you'd have negative 1 plus i times the square root of 11 over 3, and you'd have negative 1 minus i times the square root of 11 all over 3. Two answers.